Hello everybody, Gorley here. Today, we're talking about formant shifting plugins. What is formant shifting? Well, it takes the natural tone of your voice and turns it into something more... Maybe like this, so you sound like a lady. Maybe something like this, so I sound big and bold. Ooh, daddy, I'm a butt of your bread. Clearly, this is going to get out of hand very fast, but nonetheless, we are going to be talking about formant shifting plugins and doing a direct comparison between Wave's Vocal Bender and Sound Toy's Little Alter Boy. I have used both these plugins for, I don't, I don't know, a while. They both do their own unique things, and they're both really good plugins. So whichever one you do get, you're you're making a good choice just by getting one of these plugins because they're useful. But there are differences between the two. So we're going to go over that because I wish I had seen a video like this when I bought uh, formant shifting plugins. Okay, so we are in Ableton. Obviously, you can use these in any DAW. Uh, on the left, you see Waves Vocal Bender, and on the right, you see Little Alter Boy. And instantly, you're going to notice a huge difference here, and that is Waves uh, Vocal Bender is huge, and Little Alter Boy is tiny. That's because Waves has a resizable GUI, whereas Sound Toys is just static. So out of the gate, obviously, you can see that they both have pitch and formant shifting knobs, since that's what they do. Now, the pitching and the formant shifting of these is actually a little different in the sound quality it produces. Uh, little Alter Boy almost has more of sort of like a random, spontaneous, generative sort of analog sounding vibe, and also has some kind of like more panning effects that kind of just go on in the background. Uh, and Vocal Bender doesn't seem to have that. It still has its own unique sounds, but it doesn't have sort of the intense uh, randomization panning that little alter boy does and depending on what you're looking for that may or may not be annoying so I'm just going to show you an example so I'm going to set both of these to just the same settings and I'm going to go kind of extreme at first here just to show you this audible difference let's set this six match this one seven uh, you'll notice this one, uh, it's going in uh, full semitones, and this one you see it's 7.1. Uh, there's this fine button here that you can use on Vocal Bender in order to more fine tune it. Um, and uh, whereas this one, you know, it just does that for you. And the pitch goes in holes, but if you hold down shift, then it does it more of a fine tune in Little Alter Boy. So you can fine tune uh, both of these. Okay, so I'm just going to record a short little phrase just so we can have something to reference and easily turn on and off. Hey there, what's your name? Tell me what you're doing, tell me are you insane? I don't want to get mixed up with your ways If you're gonna be really crazy through your days I don't know where any of that came from, I just sang random lyrics But anyway, let's go ahead and loop that So I'm gonna press play on this And then I'm going to turn Vocal Bender on And we'll listen to it with Vocal Bender And then I'm gonna play the whole phrase with Little Alter Boy Hey! What's your name? Tell me what you're doing. Tell me, are you insane? I don't wanna get mixed up with your ways. If you're gonna be really crazy through your days. Okay, and then now let's listen to that with little Alter Boy. Hey there, what's your name? Tell me what you're doing. Tell me, are you insane? I don't wanna get mixed up with your ways. If you're gonna be really crazy through your days. So they both sound good. They both do pitch and formant shifting really well. You can go back and listen to those phrases more closely if you want to hear little unique artifacts and stuff. You might even just hear more as the video goes on, differences between the two. Uh, they each do have their own unique characteristics, but they both sound good for formant and pitch shifting. But what we're really going to focus on here is the differences between the two uh, in terms of the other feature sets that they offer. So clearly, you can see out of the gate, just on the initial GUI here, uh, Little Alter Boy has a lot more settings on it. So let's just go ahead and start there. So over on the right here, you see a mix, dry, wet. Vocal Bender obviously also has a mix, drive, wet. But we have this drive knob here. So Sound Toys says in their manual that this is basically just like a really simple drive that brings some of their features from Decapitator over into Little Alter Boy. Obviously, you don't get the full feature set of the full Decapitator plugin, but you do get Get a little drive knob so i'll turn the drive up as we listen to that phrase again and you can kind of hear it do its thing hey there what's your name tell me what you're doing tell me are you insane i don't want to get mixed up with your ways if you're gonna be really 
crazy through your days. So that's the drive knob just adds some distortion. There's about a million other ways to add distortion and you don't really get a lot of controls over the distortion it has. So the drive knob almost kind of feels like more of a novelty add-on than it does an actual useful feature. But here in the center, you have mode. So you have transpose, which is just going to take exactly however you're singing and just pitch it and format it, format, format it, shift it exactly. So here as I turn it up, format just goes up, sounds more squirrely, go down, and then it gets really deep. And then pitch is just gonna take my normal pitch, right? Format shifting. Quantize, on the other hand, works uh, kind of just like a like a cheap pitch correction. Uh, and it's just gonna snap whatever I'm singing to the nearest semitone. Hey there, what's your name? Tell me what you're doing, tell me are you insane? I so you can hear it's kind of auto-tuning the track. It's very snappy, not a lot of settings and control over it. Uh, so if you're using it, it's just as auto-tune. It's not gonna work very well, but it's kind of a fun feature. So Robot will just take your noise. I'm not gonna say singing because you can use this for anything. And it will just make it into a single note. So here it is with Robot. Even though I'm starting to sing really high, it's still holding the note. And now I'm singing really low. And you can hear there's some sort of characteristics on a tragic, but ultimately it's kind of staying the same. And you kind of just heard that there if you're wearing stereo headphones, that there was some of that panning going on I was talking about. So you kind of got a vibe of it there. So that's robot mode. It does lock the note one octave above middle C. And Vocal Bender also has the similar feature where you can flatten notes, but on Vocal Bender, you can actually choose your root note, which gives you a little bit more control. Uh, you may wonder why you would want to lock the note, and that is so you can create automation parameters within these plugins to make sequences. So if I lock it in onto one note, then as I adjust the pitch knob up, you know, one, two, three, four, five semitones, I'll know exactly what note is playing. So if I wanna make some sort of melodic sequence and automate that, I can do that and it'll always keep whatever is being fed into it, just that that flat note. And so then from there, you can do some kind of fun stuff. So Little Alter Boy has this kind of like hidden feature, which I don't understand why they hide it because it's like the coolest thing about Little Alter Boy is I can actually take MIDI signals and send it into Little Alter Boy and be able to play uh, a pitch through playing keys and basically use it like a vocoder. So to do that here in Ableton, I've just set up a MIDI track. It's got no instruments or anything on it. It's just a MIDI track. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and set the output to master mic. And then here you'll see a drop down for uh, for little alter boy you'll also see vocal bender but you can't do this for vocal bender although it shows up as a midi delivery signal and also waves tune real time can receive midi uh, to use for like reference notes and stuff like that so it is within waves capacity to be able to do this but currently this is a feature that only alter boy offers so we'll send this to little alter boy and so now what's going to happen and i'll arm that midi track for recording as well that's key so now as I play notes on my keyboard, uh, it will change the pitch knob in Little Alter Boy. So let's re-enable Little Alter Boy. We got our robot on. I'm just gonna be singing, but it's just gonna be one note. Actually rather, we'll play our phrase and it'll lock to the same note, but then I'm gonna play a melody in with the keys. Hey there, what's your name? Tell me what you're doing, tell me are you insane? I don't wanna get mixed up with your ways if you're gonna be really crazy through your days. All right, so that's pretty fun. It's pretty cool you can just kind of control the pitch with the keyboard like that. You can do a lot of, make a lot of fun melodies that way. So if somebody is like, if you have some raw recording of the lyrics and you like the rhythm of the lyrics, but you don't like the melody of the lyrics, you can use this just to really quickly chop up different ways to uh, make a melody. Now, jumping over to Vocal Bender, you can't send in mini notes to control the pitch knobs, which is a bummer. And as we saw before, it's enabled as a destination. So, and it works for waves to in real time to send reference notes. So why not use it in Vocal Bender? And this is really the biggest difference between Little Alter Boy and Vocal Bender is how you can automate these sequences. But what Vocal Bender does have is this entire LFO section here where you can send, you have two, you have two LFOs or they can be used as sequencers 
and you also have uh, an amplitude envelope, whereas the the sound gets louder, the envelope raises, and you also have a pitch envelope, whereas your pitch changes up and down, that will also change the wave and it'll modify the parameter. So let's say you wanted to assign this LFO to a knob, you could go ahead and throw it on the knob like that, and then you click and hold and drag up, and you'll see the waves going on the other side, that's kind of like the min and max of where it will travel. And then you can come in here and adjust your wave, adjust the, the rate of it, uh, smooth all these different parameters. You can uh, use the default wave, you can brush in your own waves, you can save your own waves and load them through this, uh, through this little folder icon here. So there's a lot of different waves. So you can do all kinds of fun stuff. So let's just put a wave on and we've got this being sent to formant. And just for fun, let's also just, uh, let's throw it on the mix as well. And we'll just have it apply just a little bit. And uh, let's play that sequence back and just kind of see what it does. What's your name? Tell me what you doing, tell me how you insane. I don't want to get mixed up with you. Ways if you're going to be really crazy through your days. And these automation parameters, these are kind of something universal within Waves plugin system. So you'll find these on a variety of plugins. So as you can see here, there's a lot of creative potential here with taking these different uh, envelopes and assigning them to different parameters and making them do different things, even stacking envelopes on top of each other. You can have multiple envelopes going at the same time. So you can really get freaking wild with your controls here. You can flatten your note, uh, and when you if you flatten it, then you can use one of these to create like a sequence. So here you have like a sequencer. You have your root, root which is zero, and then twelve and twenty-four. So you can make a sequence. So like let's just for example make like a let's go up seven semitones, which would be a fifth, and then let's go up like an octave. You can draw us in, and we'll just draw on the rest just for fun, just so you can kind of see what we're doing. And then you can assign this to a parameter. Let's go ahead and clear this out. Let's go ahead and assign this to pitch. And give it full blast. And now as it goes through these, it'll adjust the pitch and basically create a melodic sequence. Hey there, what's your name? Tell me what you're doing, tell me are you insane? I don't wanna get mixed up with your ways If you're gonna be really crazy through your days So ultimately, if using this was to create a melodic sequence, you know, it might be easier to play the keys with a little Alter Boy, but at the same time, if you knew you had like a one four five four, like a one six five four note phrase you wanted to do or something like that, you could program the sequence and save that and just revert back to it later Then you have all these kinds of sequences loaded up. You can also change the rate to determine how fast your notes are changing. Uh, so there's a lot of creative control over this. But as you can see, whether you are using these LFOs or whether you're just, just sending MIDI notes, um, there's some fun ways that you can play with both of these plugins. And I like both of these. I mean, uh, most times if I'm just kind of applying this to, you know, random sounds, just throwing it on as a quick hype, I usually go more towards vocal bender. But if I want to mess around with exploring different lead vocal melodies or just have like some kind of fun vocoder singing, Little Alter Boy is really good for that. Uh, and then one little detail also between the two, and this is very tiny. They both have these link buttons, but they behave a little bit differently. So for example, let's say you want your pitch high and your formant lower. As soon as you press link on little altar boy, it's going to link it to the pitch and they're going to stay linked. So you lose that kind of ratio you had set up. But in uh, vocal bender, you can set what it's going to be. So if you want your low formant and the high pitch, when you click link, though that ratio will stay and if you want to adjust it you you click and drag on your link and move that up and down now it stops at whatever if a knob hits a max so here the pitch is hitting 12 you can't go any farther and same with formant there it's hitting minus 12 so you can't go any farther but at least you can maintain that so you can get a little more control but unfortunately you can't throw an automation parameter on the link which would be kind of cool if you could so if you haven't really been able to explore with these by getting your hands on them, you probably wonder what are some of the fun ways to kind of apply these and use them in actual music scenarios. So I'm just going to run through just a couple of fun things I've just kind of discovered over the years of playing with these things. So one of my favorite things to do with formant shifting plugins is make uh, choirs with them. So this is my little Alter Boy choir. I have a video about it and there's a, I'll put a link below of where you can download this exact Ableton patch that I've made. Um, but essentially you just stack multiple of these on top of each other. You can do this with Vocal Bender as well. I just didn't own Vocal Bender at the time that I made this years ago and haven't bothered to update it. Not really much reason to. Um, but essentially this is an effects rack set up in Ableton and I have three channels, three chains here set up. One is dry, one is member one, one's member 
number two, and there's a little altar boy on each one of them. And then I've assigned, I've mapped these parameters for choir level, you know, pitch one, pitch two, format one, format two, drive one, drive two, so I can really quickly change the tuning of each of these individually. So here you can see pitch one is changing the pitch in the chain member one. Um, and so what I did with this is I pre-programmed, so I have like basic harmonies, which takes the root note I'm singing, and then member one is singing a fifth up from that, and then member two is singing the fifth under what I'm singing, and then lows just plays notes lower, highs are higher, high low octaver is one member's playing one octave up, one octave down, and then same with low double, one is, uh, they're both playing an octave down pitch, but one the formant is shifted more than the other, and same with the high double. So I'm just gonna sing into this, and you can hear what it is, but it's really powerful. This is really fun to pair with like reverbs and stuff like that, and even like uh, pitch correction software. So just for fun, I'm gonna put Waves 2 in real time on, and I'm just gonna put me in a key. Uh, we're on C major and I'm just going to sing into it and I'm also going to blast it with some reverb and I'm just going to flip through these choirs and you can kind of see what they sound like, but uh, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> And if you really want to get buck wild with this, uh, you can combine it with instruments. So here's a recorder and uh, I'm going to record this with the recorder and it's going to create multiple notes of the recorder. So it'll take a monophonic instrument and turn it polyphonic because now I'm going to have three notes playing every time I play one. So that's just one fun thing. Uh, that you can do. Another fun thing you can do with it is pitch hi-hats. So I just really quickly generated a drum sequence in Drum Monkey and exported the audio stems. <gasps> drum Monkey, oh my gosh. So I've just put it on just the hi-hats and I just kind of drone in a quick sequence and I've applied the sequence fully to the pitch informant. So as this goes, it'll shift both of them. So here's what that sounds like. And again, this is another cool thing with Vocal Bender is that if you wanted to, you could you could save a sequence like this and then just load it up at any time as like your hi-hat sequence. Then depending on when your rolls are, you could just change the rate to go faster or slower so it hits those more often or less. Now, if I wanted to do something like this in Little Alter Boy, it would be a little harder because I actually have to automate the parameters in my DAW. And that's where Vocal Bender really kind of shines through is that it has these automation parameters, but Little Alter Boy has the MIDI keyboard control. And that really is the biggest difference between the two, I would say, aside from the unique characteristics of the pitch informant shifting. Now I'm gonna run, I'm gonna pull up some just song ideas that I've worked on and just kind of add these into it and sort of show you fun ways to mess with the parameters. The audio will change a little bit because I'm opening up a new Ableton session and this mic's going through Ableton, so just bear with that, but uh, it'll be fun. So here's a track, for example, where I just have this like guitar kind of percussive sound going on. And uh, it's just the same note, and I just kind of use it as sort of a percussive effect. But let's say I did want to add some sort of melody to that. All right, so let's open up Vocal Bender's LFO section here. Let's add kind of like this stair wave kind of look here. And we really want to affect the pitch of this drastically. So let's go ahead and apply this both to formant and pitch. We'll make sure that it's turned all the way up to get maximum effect. I'm going to press play, and you're going to hear how this little bouncing balls here are going to uh, affect our sound. <laughs> So that's cool little diddly daddly. So another example, let's say, uh, is I have this song with this little vocal bit in it, and we're just gonna focus on this one little section. I'm gonna play the song real quick, and you're gonna listen to the main vocal. Oh, so I down, need you so down, 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 man. Let's say you didn't like that melody very much, so you throw a little Alter Boy on here. We've got our MIDI track set up, which is sending to little Alter Boy, and now I have control over here, and uh, just in this example, I'm gonna set it to robot, which is gonna lock me to C, but I do know that the song was sung in F, so I'll start on F and then I'll play my F major scale and it'll I can mess with the vocals in the F major scale. So let's just go ahead and mess with that and we can just play a couple melodies to try to redo that vocal melody. Oh, so down, that's a little bit much for me. Oh, so down, that's a little bit much for me. Oh, 
slow down, that's a little bit much for me. Oh, slow down, that's a little bit much for me. So that just took that one vocal chop and we messed around with it and found a bunch of different cool melodies in there. So we were, could have recorded that, sent it over to audio and have that actually as a sample with that melody in there or just keep the MIDI sending into that channel and we can just go back through and change our MIDI at any time. So as you can see, these plugins are really powerful and you can do a lot of cool stuff with them. They each have their own unique things about it, but they're both great. Whichever one you buy, you are not making a bad decision. Maybe you want both of them because they both are useful. I think if Vocal Bender eventually adds that MIDI capability to be able to send a MIDI signal into it, then there isn't as much reason to have Little Alter Boy anymore at that point, other than the unique sound characteristics that it generates. But in any case, I hope this was useful to you. If it was, press that little red button. I think music education should be free, and YouTube is a great, great way to bring that to you, and all I ask is that you press that nice little red button there. And I have a playlist of a bunch of different music production tips. I'll link it here at the end of this video, floating right here, and uh, as well as probably another video and some other stuff you can click. So uh, anyway, have a good rest of your day, and uh, don't forget to stay fantastic.